Hello and welcome back to another video and today is the National League Transfer Roundup. All the transfer news from the 24 teams in the fifth tier. I haven't done this video for two weeks and they have been very, very busy in the transfer window. So if you are new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. And let's try and smash 50 likes on the video. The last video went down really, really well. So if you can ha smash the like button, it would mean a lot. Let's get into it. Before we start, I have to give a shout out to National League Bible, who makes all the cards you see for each club. Um, it's much, much appreciated, and he makes the videos possible. Um, so make sure you follow him on Instagram. And also, Non League Edits, who makes the fancy little edits for some of the big signings in the National League. Let's get into it with Dover Athletic. So we head down to the south coast. Um, with Dover Athletic and I think in my last video they hadn't make it, made any signings but they've made three um, pretty good signings and the one that stands out for me is Ini Effiong. He was formerly at Woking, he then went up to Scotland and then to get him down again um, back playing uh, National League football is a great achievement from Dover so um, decent signing there. I don't think they've lost uh, any more players apart from that. I think they may have lost Femi um, to Bromley who haven't done too much uh, since we last talked about them in the last video. But they have brought in Omar Bogle, who um, I think was in the Jamie Vardy Academy. I remember that name. Um, and apart from that, they haven't, uh, it hasn't been too crazy. So not too much uh, news for the Bromley fans. Stay in London for the next club, which is Leighton Orient, who have brought in the signing of James Alibi. FC were linked with him in January. But Tranmere really don't rate this guy. He did pretty poorly and he's been to so many clubs. Um, so I don't really rate that signing. But I feel free to prove me wrong. They also lost Caprice who, um, according to Leighton Orient fans, is not too great. Um, but I think Leighton Orient are going to need a few more signings. And I do think Leighton Orient will do well. Um, but that is dependent on the signings they do bring in. And if they keep hold of Bond and some of those other good players. But we move on to newly promoted Harrogate. Um, so since we last talked about them, they've brought in one player of Jack Muldone and they've lost some players as well. I don't know too much about them. Uh, let me know in the comments below if they are big players, but I'll let you have a look at that now. I don't know too much about Harrogate at this stage. Ford City, the title favourites for the league and they've been the most busiest club in the National League window and they continue to bring in more players with James uh, Jones joining and Jack Lawler and a long list of players that have, have left. They've really improved that squad um, with EFL standard and National League players um, for the season and I think that they are going to get a lot of money through and more sustainable as because um, they've got the cost of 92 and they've been announced uh, they've got a friendly on TV. I think that's like the first time that's ever happened and they've got the first a BT uh, sport game. So I think they're gonna get a few, a bit of money in through that. Um, so I think Salford City are gonna be a force to reckon with. And the signings they're, they're bringing in, they're gonna be right up there. Button, uh, who've brought in one player of Charlie Clo, uh, and I think they lost a couple of players as well, or moved on. Um, so not, much, not too much to report um, from Sutton United. Ian Egan at uh, Barrow FC has been pretty busy. Uh, he's brought in a few players, uh, John Rooney, uh, Jacob Blythe, Josh Kay. So a few decent signings from Barrow. They did um, lose this, lose uh, Bedesinti Gomis uh, recently, who was a decent player for them. Um, and I think Barrow are going to need a few more signings to um, maybe stay in the league. They stay up north for Fylde. Um, and not too much report uh, as well. They've lost a few players. Uh, I think they've brought in Russell Griffiths. I'm not too sure about that. So not too much report from that. Uh, the big thing from uh, AFC Fylde is Danny Rowe going to sign for newly promoted Tranmere. It's been lingering on um, and I think it will happen eventually. Uh, Fylde want big money. I don't. We haven't heard much from Danny Rowe. Does he want to leave? Does he want to stay? I don't think he wants to say anything because then if he does go, um, then things will be a bit of friction between Fylde and Tranmere. Um, so yeah, not too much report from the transfer side, but the rumours of Danny Rowe going to Tranmere continues to linger on. We go to my team, Ebbsfleet United, and I hope when I first made that video, I thought well, there would be a few more signings. We have made a signing of Jack King, but we really need to get a wriggle on 
and start bringing in some players. Um, no departures, but we have brought in Jack King, who is an experienced defender, who is a good signing. So our, our two signings are quality signings, but we're going to need a few more. We desperately need a striker, as, as Danny Kedwell can't do it um can't do it consistently for much longer and also the news of Marvin McCoy signing for Aldershot which I'll talk about when I talk about the shots. Country Town have done some business in my last video they had done nothing uh, no ingoings or no outgoings they brought in three players I uh, don't know too much about Braintree I don't know if they're good signings or not um, but I think Braintree gonna need some National League uh, quality into that side um, for me to stay in the National League so Going to need a few more signings, um, and yeah, they've only lost one player, so they haven't really got rid of those players who are probably National League South standards. So it'll be interesting to see how Braintree do next season. Stone, uh, who have brought in a player of George McLennigan. Um, don't know too much about him either. Uh, they've also lost um, Alex Winter, who I thought was a decent player for them. So the Maidstone, um, again, I think they're another team that's going to be are they going to finish in that relegation zone or in, they gonna, in that scrap? Um, if they aren't, they're going to need a few more signings into that squad. Um, and they're going to need a few more um, players of Alex Finney's quality to boost uh, Maidstone up the league. Nothing much to report from Haven't. Uh, they have lost Matt Tubbs, um, who uh, helped them get promoted. But apart from that, all the players, they haven't brought any, any more new players in. Um, and not too much report from um, Havant and Wootaloo-ville in the transfer window. Dagenham, uh, who have brought in three players. Um, in my last video, they only lost players. So they've brought in three players. Um, and the new manager's trying to put their stamp on the team. Um, Gavin Hout, Alex Davey and Lamar Reynolds. So uh, some decent signings there for Dagenham and Redbridge. But considering the players they've lost, I think they're going to have a struggle uh, next season. Then go to Hampshire with Eastley, uh, who have done a bit of business. Um, they have lost a few players, and they have, they've have lost one or two, uh, but not too much to report from Eastley. I think they've brought in Joe Jones and Alex Winter to the side, um, but Eastley, I think they're going to need a few more signings. Um, but you're interested to see how Hessen Tyler does with his first full season uh, with the Spitfires. Solly Moors have brought in a few players. Another one of those teams in the last video that had made no signings. And the assistant manager, of course, they lost Mark Yates. Um, so they've now got a new manager in. Um, but considering those signings, I think it's going to be uh, a real tough challenge for Sully Moors to stay in the league. Um, but they've pulled off miracles before. Um, and I think Sully Moors could do it again. But I think they're going to need a few more signings to improve. Barnett, who have made some absolutely great signings and have been very, very busy since my last video. Um... John Akinde is set to leave to Lincoln City. We were linked with him, but they're asking for a ridiculous fee. And John Akinde is asking for very, very high wages. Um, one of the big signings, Callum Reynolds from Aldershot, their captain, has gone to Barnet. And a collection of other good signings like Jack Barham, who I think scored 37 goals for Greenwich Borough. Um, lower down, so we to see how well he does. But Barnet making some good signings. Uh, John still using his experience at this non-league level and Barnett with more signings like that and you know if John still can get this right he could get uh, the B's back up to the Football League. Gateshead FC of course went back um, part-time. They have been able to bring in a few players but I think it's going to be a real struggle for Gateshead this season. They've lost a host of players. Just look at the outgoing list. Um, so we're interested to see Interesting to see how Gateshead do fare this season, um, but I don't know how it's how it's going to go. They have brought in um, Tinkler and Hunter, Hunter, um, but Gateshead have got a real uh, fight on their hands to to you know to stay in the league. Not too much to report from Maidenhead. They have brought in James Akinde, uh, James Akakunde, I think. Um, but apart from that, not too much from Maidenhead. They have announced. In my opinion, two pretty bad kits. Their home kit has a massive sponsor on it and their away kit is purple and gold. Let me know your opinions on the Maidenhead kit. I don't rate it too much. We go up to Hartlepool, uh, who have made a few good signings uh, since my last video. They've brought in Liam Noble and Mark Kitchen. So um, some decent signings from Hartlepool. Uh, they have lost their goalkeeper, Scott Harrison, and, and the other uh, outgoings um, were from... 
in the, included in the previous video. Um, so some decent signings from Hartlepool. We're interested to see um, what the sort of expectations for Hartlepool fans are this year. Are they going for promotion or is it trying to conciliate themselves? We then go back down south to Boreham Wood, um, who have made some uh, one signings in my last video. They brought in Femi Alasalami. Uh, who was actually linked with Ebsfleet, uh, he's a left back, so decent signings, they're four uh, very good signings from Boreham Wood. Chesterfield FC um, have made some decent signings since their last, uh, since my last video, Will Evans, a uh, good signing, Charlie Carter, uh, Woking's top scorer, uh, here's the fancy edit for him, um, so yeah, some real um, good signings there from Chesterfield, uh, they have lost a, a lot of those players, um, but I think maybe they were getting older and you can't have them on those budgets, but we'll be facing them on the first game of the season. Um, so maybe we'll see a few of those new signings against the fleet. Halifax Town, National League Bibles team, um, made some good uh, some signings since the last video, but not too much to report. A lot of outgoings, on the uh, they have gone to join with their um, old manager, uh, Alfreton. Um, like the massive Tom Denton like I mentioned last video um, so not too much to mention for the Shaman. The penultimate team is Aldershot Town who have been pretty busy since their last video they managed to bring in some good signings um, Luke Howe, Marvin McCoy of course from FC a decent left back um, don't know um, he was very good for us in the National League South season didn't play uh, much this season but I think he is a good left back right back and I think he'll be good for um, Aldershot uh, Regan Booty on loan, uh, Josh Lelan um, as well, and good player there, Luke Howell as well. So all the shot um, done a decent job to kind of replace those players they've lost, and all the shots um, season is looking a little bit more promising. Last but certainly not least is Wrexham, um, who on the day of recording have just signed Luke Summerfield. So the reason they're last is um, I had to get the video. Um, I asked National League Bible to put Luke Summerfield in, so take, appreciate that, Wrexham fans. Um, and they've also signed Mike Fundop. I don't know too much about him, but I do know he comes up in the free agents a lot on Football Manager, and he does a decent job, so if if that knowledge helps, then it helps. Um, and then Luke Summerfield, another decent signing. Um, they've lost a few players, but um, I think Wrexham have got a struggle on their hands. Um, Wrexham, Wrexham players... Um, maybe you want to rejoin with their old manager of Dean Keats at Warsaw and play Football League or League One football. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if any of those Wrexham players do go and sign for Dean Keats's uh, Warsaw. So I hope you enjoyed the video. That is the transfer roundup from all of the 24 teams in the uh, National League. So let me know uh, which is the best signing so far, which team has done the best business. Uh, and let me know, are you excited for the, for the new season? Uh, what games are you most looking forward to? Obviously, I can't wait for the Chesterfield game. What bigger way days have you got planned? Obviously, the fixtures got announced. Already done a video of that. Check it out in the card up there. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please, uh, let's try and smash 50 likes on the video. The first video got a really good reception, so if you could smash the like button, it'd be much, much appreciated. Subscribe if you're new. Let's try and reach 3K by the end of the summer. And I'll see you all later. Up the fleet.